It, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, great to have you all here and welcome to uh, the return of uh, Monday Market Matters here at Active Trades for uh, 15th of May 2023. Um, I hope that you enjoyed, for those of you joining us from the UK, the last couple of uh, Bank Holiday Mondays. Hope you enjoyed those long weekends uh, and hope you're uh, now raring to, uh, to go to get back into what have been rather eventful and interesting markets. Um, great to have you here, as I said, and uh, for today's session on the Monday Market Matters, our uh, educational element will be focused on, in particular, what we call trading the FTR setup, the fail to return. Um, some people may be aware of it. It might be new to some people, but hopefully it'll give you a little bit of insight and give people a, a somewhat simple mechanical setup that you could actually maybe take away and utilize in your uh, own trading. What should we cover today? What we talk about during our session, as always, we'll have a little bit of a chat about Monday market uh, matters and in particular things like the, the news elements that are coming up. But what we're going to talk about is, well, how can we join an existing trend if we have missed the initial move? It's something that happens to, to all traders, all traders, you know, we don't as much as we might like to think that we can capture the start of every new trend. The reality is normally very different. Uh, and so there we're going to look at as well, how could we join an existing trend? Uh, and with that in mind, well, we'll look at what the FTR setup is, the, the fail to return. Uh, and how could we use it in our trading to join that new existing trend? Uh, and then as always, you know, we will take a uh, look at the uh, live markets just to give us a little bit of insight into, uh, into you know, what's going on as we approach the, uh, the start of the uh, the US markets. For those of you who don't know me, uh, uh, my name is Paul, traded for many years, okay, traded for funds, traded for clients. Uh, primarily, I like to focus on FX indices and commodities for my own trading. I tend to be a trend trader for longer term trading and a reversal trader for shorter term trader, uh, all of which elements will uh, combine to, uh, to sort of play a part in our discussions today. If you are joining us for our your, for your first session here, well, uh, Monday Market Matters is our regular webinar series that uh, every Monday, two o'clock London time, where we just sort of help traders start the right week in the right frame as we prepare for the opening of the uh, the major US markets. So uh, every Monday, we take a little bit of quick time to look at what is the news coming up that week, what to be aware of. We will do a major piece on education, something that will help you build your own trading knowledge. We'll also have a little look at the uh, active trades platforms and tools that you have available to you as, uh, as clients. Uh, and we always have a little look at the live markets just to, uh, just to get us an introduction to the start of the, uh, of the US session. So as always, lots to cover, lots for us to have a, uh, a conversation about. As always, uh, I recognize that uh, we have a broad range of experience of uh, people who join us for our sessions, um, something for, uh, for everybody. Uh, and I also recognize that we have a truly global audience who join us. So wherever you are joining us from in the world, it's great to have you here. You are uh, very welcome, myself and all of the uh, all of the team at Active Trades. You know we uh, we appreciate you joining us, and uh, we look forward to uh, look forward to you joining us for for regular sessions of the Monday Market Matters webinars. So um, as always, we uh, we have a little quick look at the uh, the news. Okay, what kind of news can we expect coming up this uh, this week ahead? And you know, I make no apology for saying the same thing every week. Namely, if you are a new trader, I don't expect you to be able to analyze the news, but I do expect you to know when the major news is coming out. You'll find that there is an economic calendar on the Active Trades uh, website and other ones are you know around the uh, internet. Uh, and as I said, there is always a there's always a plethora of different news coming out, and it's important for you to recognize and understand if that will have any implication upon the instruments that you might be trading for that for that day or particular week. Um, for this week in general, there is a bit of news coming out. Um, it's not, I don't believe, it's, it's not as big and uh, as heavy and as important as what we've seen over the last few weeks, where at the start of every month we get some of the, the really big major economic news, but we've also had some of the uh, 
the earnings reports for some of the sort of, let's say, heavyweight US stocks. So that has meant an awful lot of data coming in, uh, and that has had the uh, the natural impact that it does upon uh, upon particular markets. But you know, uh, you know, if we're looking at uh, you know not massive amounts coming out today per se, but um, you can see tomorrow. Okay, we've got quite a bit coming there from the Australians, from the Chinese, from the German ZDW index, which is a uh, a sort of uh, a, you know a snapshot of confidence within the sort of German economy. We've got Canadian CPI figures, okay, in US retail sales. Both of those will be deemed to be important, certainly for uh, for Canada, along with the Japanese GDP updates. Um, but we also have the UK employment data tomorrow. For those of you who are trading sterling or those of you based in the UK, well, then what we have seen is, of course, Mr. Bailey at the Bank of England and his colleagues talking about how the how sensitive they are to the effectively the employment data and the inflation data here in the UK to 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 guide them on their future choices and decisions in terms of the uh, the sort of let's say the trajectory of uh, UK uh, interest rates so there will be a lot of interest in that UK employment data um tomorrow as I said, there is some other bits of news coming out this week. You can see there, you can read that for yourself, the fair bits coming out. As I said, things that are, are of interest, but um, nothing that we would probably see as, you know, a real major catalyst of the next move and when we look at the charts at the end of the at the end of a session you'll probably see how that that reflects a little bit in the uh, in the markets that we look at um, at the moment so you know having discussed the news let's have a talk about our education element and in particular as i said today we're going to talk about trading the ftr setup and and as the slide says you know, in previous sessions, we have looked at simple trading tactics like fiery crosses, false breakouts, etc., as potential trade setups. Uh, and you will find the the majority of all of these sessions they are recorded and they go on the Active Trades webinar archive. You can find them on the website. By all means, you know, I commend you to uh, be able to go and utilize them and take them in. Okay, there's some uh, really good content there from myself and my colleagues that you can utilize to to help you with your uh, with your own trading. Um, when we talk about trade setups and what we're talking about here is that, you know, as the slide says, it's impossible to capture the start of every new trend despite a trader's best wishes. You know, lots of reasons lots of traders like to trade a reversal pattern because they think that it will get them into the start of a new trend. But I'm here to tell you that, you know, after years of trading for myself, you know, trying to capture the start of every new trend is is, is nigh on impossible. Sometimes you'll capture it well, and that's that's fabulous. But many of the times, you know, the the the, the trend will start for reasons that, you know, beyond your control. Maybe it was just during, you know, the the night from where you would trade, or maybe they were just you were, you know, uh, doing it elsewhere. Okay, or you know, maybe just the way the the price action has played out might just mean that it didn't give you a very clear entrance signals. So then we're kind of interested in is, well, you know, how could we join that new trend in a clear, easy way if it's already started up? Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is, you know, how some traders are looking for a very simple mechanical trade setup that allows them to engage with markets. And so today we'll discuss that one simple setup that traders can take away and use in these situations that give you a, a very simple, clear, mechanical way to, to join an, an existing trend. And that's the FTR setup. So, you know, if we take a few moments just to set the scene, as always, because I appreciate, as always, as I said, we have a broad range of experience of uh, people joining us. And I recognize that a lot of the people joining us are, uh, you know, are very new, very clearly just starting out on their trading journey. Uh, but, you know, anybody who's traded markets for a while will realize that, you know, when we look at how markets move, you know, we know and realize that markets never move in a strong line. Right? They never move in a, a straight line. OK, you know, every uh, even very strong trends have, you know, uh, um, you know, we'll see that you will have pullbacks. OK, and in this particular here, I've, I've not put uh, you know, an instrument or a time on because it actually doesn't matter. It shouldn't really matter at all. But even a strong trend, OK, it will price will pull back. OK, price will pull back. It never price never moves in a straight line right even the most strongest of trends will have a pullback of sorts and you know if you've joined us in the previous sessions and we've talked about this you know and you realize can we use those pullbacks to join a new trend well you know of course we can 
All right. Of course, we can. We've uh, we've just effectively uh, um, talked about that a great deal in our previous sessions, but you know it forms us the basis of what we can talk about um, this afternoon and with our uh, setup that we'll we'll focus on today. So. You know, uh, as the slide says, in new bullish uptrends, you know, we will invariably get pullbacks. Why do we get a pullback? Well, because one, there's always somebody somewhere that is taking profit. People are uh, joining, you know, these sessions or taking those trades, and they will have, you know, different timelines, different profit targets, etc., than yourself. So there's always somebody taking profit, all right? And that in itself can be enough after a nice move up to cause price to, to pull back. But with that pullback, well, you know, there are always somebody somewhere who's waiting to get in. There's somebody, let's say like ourselves, who may have missed this first sort of kind of bullish move and have been sat patiently waiting okay for price to pull back so that they have a position an opportunity to sort of buy into what they believe will be just a pullback in the new trend uh, and then you might also say that there are the market makers themselves the dealers who they're wanting to encourage more people to come off the sidelines all right to join the new train by cycling in and out of uh, uh, of orders and what does that mean well you know they may they may be buying here they may be selling here they may be buying back in again there again they're just cycling in and out of orders trying to you know just effectively push price where to where they would like it to go uh, and invariably by doing so you know draw in traders who've been sat in off the sidelines remember market makers you know they generally tend to get paid when orders get triggered so they're always going to be wanting to to sort of you know entice people off the sidelines to to, to get into the market and so that brings in, in terms in a bullish uptrend well that brings you know very often you know, new buyers okay into the uh, market and all of that's what goes on to create a you know a market trend uh, you know and it's about well how do we take advantage of that You know, uh, and in a downtrend, okay, you know, price doesn't move in a straight line. And in a bar bearish downtrend, we will also get pullbacks because there will be somebody who is sold. And then invariably what will happen is, you know, they will want to be taking their profits because there's always somebody somewhere taking profits. Uh, and if they were sellers here, well, they're, they're going to have to buy, okay, they're going to have to buy to sort of cover their position. Well, you know, that might just drive the price up before, before, okay, point two. Always someone who's missed the start of that trend is waiting to get on board. And as part of that pullback, people start selling. Okay. They start selling back in again, and the dominant trend re exerts itself. And as we've just talked about as well, you'll have market makers wanting to encourage more people to join the new downtrend to entice them off the sidelines. So they'll be cycling in and out of order. So, as I said, even the strongest trends, there will be pullbacks. Those pullbacks were created for various reasons. And it's about how do we utilize that as an opportunity? How do we turn that normal trading behavior? How do we turn that into a uh, into an opportunity for ourselves? You know, and as I says there, and as I've talked about a lot in the past and previous sessions, you know, many people will know and understand pullbacks, and there are many ways to trade them. But today, I'm just going to share one very, very simple version, okay, called the fail to return or the FTR that you will hear traders talk about. Very simple, very mechanical, uh, which I think is really great for new traders because the setup is either there or it isn't. There's not really that much ambiguity, and that's what you want as a new trader, okay? You want to just be able to have very clear rules that you're able to to follow so here you go you might want to take a screenshot um, of this what we'll talk about here is a, a bullish ftr bullish fail to return so what we need to understand and recognize is that the the fail to return it is a momentum play so we're looking for the momentum the moment of a new trend we want to work with that what we're looking to do is, you know, as price is in starting off in that new trend, well, what we want to do and see is that price makes, you know, two or three more bare, you know, bullish candles. Okay. And actually, in this particular case here, there's actually quite a lot. But realistically, we're looking for at least two, preferably three bullish candles. And then we start to get interested because then what happens is then follows a two candle play. And I will, I will show this. So price. Having made a couple of bullish candles, price makes one bearish or seller bar, okay? Just one. And this is the fail to return candle, all right? 
so in this particular case, what we have is, you know, we've had a couple of bullish candles and then we get here, bang. Okay. We get one bearish candle, one seller bomb. The important thing is, okay, the next point is that buying then resumes and the next candle is a bullish candle that closes above the high of the previous bearish candle. And this is the confirmation candle. And that's what um, that's what we're doing. So Bill asks, is the FTR a continuation pan oh, oh, yeah, of a variation? Yes, it is, Bill. OK, yes, it is, because we're expecting to basically the existing trend to continue. You know, so, yes, it is a it's a variation on a uh, continuation pan. But what we're looking for is that two candle play after, you know, bullish candles. We get one. OK, important one bearish or seller bar, this is the, the fail to return candle. And then the buying resumes, and basically the next candle is bullish, and importantly, it closes above the high of the previous bearish candle, and that is your confirmation candle. It is also, when that candle completes, that is your trigger, so you'll be buying at the market. Your stop loss would be beneath the, the low of the FTR bar, and our target would be one and a half reward to risk, or the next level of resistance based upon what the uh, the chart is showing you. Okay, so it's a very it's a very simple setup. You know, it's a, there's the whole idea, quite simple, quite mechanical. Okay, just literally waiting to see you know a new trend starting, which you know we might have missed for whatever reason, but you know once it's in there, we can just wait, see if we get a couple of bullish candles followed by one bearish candle. The next candle is bullish, the buying you know it resumes, and it closes above the high of that bearish candle. If that occurs when it closes, well, then basically we're buying the market, stop loss beneath the uh, the, the low, and then we're targeting, you know, one and a half times, you know, our reward to risk or the next level of resistance, which might be in, you know, in front of where, uh, of where price is going to. Uh, and also, you'll find it will work on the short side as well. So for a, a bearish fail to return, just remember, fail to return is, it's a momentum play, a little bit like Bill saying, it's continuation. We are expecting the existing trend to continue in the direction that it started out. But, you know, we're looking for the momentum of that new downtrend. So in this particular case, we've, you know, we've, we've reversed here. And then basically, we're starting to make our move down. We're getting bearish candles, click, click 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 price prints two or three or more bearish candles then we have a two candle play and this time you know it's effectively it's a flip of it's the reverse of what we've just looked at because now we expect price to make one bullish or buyer's bar that is the ftr candle okay and then the second candle is selling resumes the next candle is a bearish candle that also closes beneath the low of the previous bullish candle. That is your confirmation candle. So we've had, let's clear this down a little bit, shall we? We've had, you know, moves. We've had one bullish candle, okay? One bullish candle, all right? The next candle is bearish and it closes beneath the low of the previous candle. So this is your FTR bar. This is your confirmation candle. Once that confirms, bang. We're selling that candle, okay, with a stop above the uh, the fail to return bar and then our target is one and a half times our reward to risk or the next level of support which may well be in the way of the uh, of the trend move so once again it you know it's quite simple it's quite mechanical and, and this is one of the reasons i like it for uh, new traders is you know new traders may not have had the you know the the sort of the experience or necessarily have the uh, you know the kind of the um uh, the skill set yet to to basically to recognize or understand why price might be reversing but once we can see that we're getting a couple of bearish candles then that one candle okay just one bullish candle followed by a bearish candle which closes beneath the low that's that is the two candle play okay that is what we are particularly looking to um to, to see because price once it's coming down here and it's closing beneath it well the likelihood is it's going to fail to return it's going to fail to return back up to this area and actually what we're expecting to do as you can see in that example the price to uh, price for it to continue its way uh, price for it to continue its down So uh, Carson's asked, where would an example be the uh, take profits? So let's just basically 
I've uh, just kept it quite clear on this one, Carsten, but there's a few examples which we will be uh, looking at. But if we are entering here, okay, and I'll stop, you know, just above the uh, above the high of the candles there. Well, what we'd be looking to do is, you know, we're looking for we've identified our trade risk. And um, let's just say, for example, that was 30 pips for for want of example. Well, then we'd be looking for a target of about 45 pips, which would probably be just uh, by pure eyeballs, probably down around about there. Or alternatively, what might be the next level of support? If the next level of support is here, well, then, you know, that realistically, that's probably not uh, a terribly good setup. OK, but the likelihood is, you know, if our support is way down here also, it gives us the opportunity to to, to take a good trade. And I, uh, I've got a, a few examples in a few slides time cast. And so I hope that helps. Uh, but stay with us and we'll uh, talk a little bit more about it in a uh, in a moment. Right, you're welcome, Carsten. Uh, okay, so that is the bullish FTR. That's the bearish FTR. Okay, just quite simple, quite mechanical, right? Trade setups that uh, that we're looking to, to to work with here. And as I said, it's an opportunity to join a, a you know a new trend, a trend that has started off, uh, and it gives us an opportunity to 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 join it. Um, so there's a few examples here. Okay, I've got various different types. Okay, uh, so this was on the uh, the dollar yen. Okay, in the four hour chart, uh, we can see the price had been basically price had been quite bullish. They had broken out of this particular level, broken its way out there. Okay, uh, and then you know what we have is we have you know, one bearish candle, but the bullish candle doesn't close above it. Then you know as we continue on, we get one bearish candle, but then the next candle here doesn't it. It closes a bullish candle and it's closed above the high of the FTR. So there's actually one trade, okay, set up. But then actually what we get is, and you only have to remember this, is that you know the next candle is also it's one bearish candle followed by bang, another bullish candle which closes above the high. So there, you know, there you've got a second, okay, a second fail to return candle. And you know, and price works its way up, puts in, you know, one bearish candle here, but it doesn't close, does it? it doesn't close okay above the bearish candle in the same way this one here does not close above the bearish candle but you know here we go just clear these down a little bit well you know these we have had two setups that run our way towards our target and what we have is actually also a, a next the uh, a next level of resistance but actually once price reverses here okay and falls away well, what we actually have here is price drops, okay, quite significantly. Price drops to that's the 50 period moving average. And what does it do? Puts in one bullish candle, followed by the next candle is bearish and closes, okay, closes um, beneath the low of that candle. In which case, you know, for traders on the four hour chart, and we'll touch on to this a little bit more in a moment, you'd be basically to be able, looking to be short there with your stops above the highs and then looking to sort of, you know, um, move down towards trade down towards this level of support price let's clear this down price continues down it then once again we get one bullish candle as it also you know it's a pin bar it's a rejection candle the next candle the bearish selling resumes and invariably what happens is that basically the price closes beneath the uh, um, beneath the, the bullish candle that in itself is another FTR setup uh, and you know what we have is that we can see that we're into our level of support here to be, we're you know we're running towards and actually what we can see is that the price sets up here okay again it puts in you know a bullish candle followed by a bearish candle which closed beneath but we're all already kind of at a level of support we do it again here okay we do it uh, we do it a couple of times there but actually what we've done is we've mostly done our run down towards the sort of next significant level of um support but just to show you that you know when a trend is strong there will always still be those one bar pin bars that allow you know, allow you an opportunity to look at uh, ways to join that trend if you haven't captured the initial the initial thrust or the initial reversal. Um, just yeah, just a couple of examples. You'll probably be able to tell I do a lot of trading on the four hour charts there. Okay, uh, but Kiwi dollar here has been in a uh, in a nice trend moving its way up you know we get occasions you know where we uh, where we see sort of you know trades and moves but you know as the price is moving up we have you know a nice big bullish candle followed by a bearish candle one bearish candle the next candle afterwards closes okay closes bullish so there's your first trade then invariably we actually set up again 
Okay, we set up again. I think the, the target here was literally, we were very lucky by this kind of skin of the teeth, skin of the teeth. But there was two setups there before price basically rolled its way, uh, rolled its way over. And, and this is um, not dissimilar. Okay, this is not, um, uh, you know, this is the, the, the way that we expect the FTR to work, namely that, you know, a trend has already started. This is a way to join a, a trend. Okay, so you're you're very rarely, you know, as I said, getting the the complete start. It is allowing us to get a, a piece of an existing trend. Okay, we're not we're not looking to capture the exact start. We're not looking to capture the exact peaks or troughs. The FTR is about finding ways and means to be able to to join uh, an existing trend that is already um, is another ready to. So Bill said another name for this that I'm familiar with is uh, rally base rally and drop base rally. Um, well, yes, that's that's one way. You know, that's um, very much in terms of like supply and demand trading. It is in a way, uh, it is a way a version of that. Okay, it is isn't a you know way a version of that. That's one way that you could um, um, that you could invariably uh, look at it, Bill. So yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you in terms of your labeling it. Um, how you choose to label it is is absolutely fine. I'm not um, I'm not massively pedantic on that. What is important to me is that you understand how the setup has been created, why the setup has been created, what has, what has actually gone on and occurred, and that's that's the kind of the important element. How you how you wish to label it, that, that's absolutely that's absolutely fine by me. No problem with no problem with that at all. Um, this is uh, an, an example now. Um, this is, you know, this is the, uh, you know, very early morning FTSE 100 five minute um, trade. Okay, it's an FTR setup. Now, uh, what I normally suggest is that you know, for new traders, you kind of stay on the 30 minute chart and above generally. But as you gain an experience, if you gain a little bit of knowledge of being able to comfortably trade intraday, well, then you know, it's a it is another tool that you can sort of utilize in your armory. But uh, in this particular case, you know, uh, five minute chart price on the FTSE has come out, broken outside of the Asian range, and then invariably it is reversed off that. Uh, and then we've started to fall down again. We started to collapse, price has dropped. And then what we see is price puts in one bullish candle. Okay, it's also a bit of a rejection candle, a pinball candle inside bar as well. The next candle, bang, price, the selling resumes, it closes beneath the low. And there is a, an FTR setup there, okay, with you stop above the uh, the high of the two candles. Price continues down, doesn't it? Then basically price sets in a, another one bearish candle, okay, that is also just happens to be a bit of a rejection candle off the, the red 50 period moving average. Next candle can, continues, okay, the selling continues. It, it, uh, it's a bearish candle closed beneath that one uh, bullish pullback candle, okay, uh, and then invariably there's an opportunity to to trade that as well, okay. So, um, as I said, I wanted to show that um, this is very much a time frame and instrument agnostic trading setup. Um, it's just that I, I normally suggest that for newer traders, maybe just stay on the 30 minute chart and above looking for it until you've got some experience under your belt, okay. There's no need to, to sort of uh, race into it straight off the bat. Uh, and a, you know, a couple more examples. I think I've got a couple more examples. Yeah, as I said, you'll be able to tell I do a lot of trading on the the four hour chart. This is the euro against the US dollar. It's clearly in a bit of a downtrend, isn't it? Clearly in a very nice downtrend at that time. Uh, and what happens is we can see prices, you know, making quite a few, quite a few uh, bearish candles, just confirming that we're in a downtrend. And then what happens? We get one bullish candle it just always happens to be a bit of a rejection candle which helps but doesn't have to be and then the next candle okay the second candle okay the uh, confirmation candle is bearish and closed beneath the low well that's that's the opportunity okay that's the ftr set up there uh, and then actually what happens is candle con continues okay then we get one bullish candle pulled about which got a little bit of width to the north side a bit of a rejection candle and then the next candle just basically closing it you know it's a bearish candle but it closes just by a sliver okay but it doesn't it doesn't matter you know as long as it's even like just one pip if it closes one pip beneath the uh, ftr candle that 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 satisfies the rules okay before price uh, before price continues down and actually we can see the price you know did continue down for for a good few extra days all right but you know uh, 
as I said, uh, trying to always stress that you know th this is not really a surprise that you know you're getting you know uh, FTR in in the middle, okay, in the middle of the trend. All right, so that's that's what we expect because you know I don't know maybe you missed the shorts there, the shorts there, okay, for whatever reason, maybe you just you know it, it, it happened when you were asleep, it wasn't your trading time, or you know. Um, or invariably it wasn't your initial setup or invariably it just wasn't a very clear setup. That's absolutely fine. You know, you will never you'll never be able to capture the start of every new trend, okay? And and trying to or putting that pressure on yourself rarely, rarely works well in the long run. This is a way of, okay, I see there's a trend. Is there a way for me to be able to join it? Is there a way for me to be able to take just a, a small piece of this trend? And uh, you know, I know lots of i know lots of successful trend following traders you know who basically that is just what they look to do okay they you know they're just looking to take a piece off the trend they're not they're not trying to capture the exact start okay or the exact end all right but if they can just capture a bit of a piece of the middle they are very happy all right they're very happy as a trend following trader and so something that is very simple mechanical actually suits them right for a lot of new traders as well having a simple mechanical setup is what can help you you know rather than rather than let's say a a complex and ambiguous uh, ambiguous uh, trade setup so you know a, a few final points about the ftr the fail to return setup so you know as uh, Bill's question uh, was before, you know, it is a trend continuation play, a momentum play. So there has to be momentum, and we define that momentum uh, of at least there being at least two to three, two to three, you know, candles in the direction of the uh, of the trend. Okay, that's showing us that there is some momentum there, and then we are expecting a continuation to occur. If price is in a consolidation period, well, then give it a miss. Right, we're, we're wanting continuation. We want momentum. If they are not there then neither should you be. Um, as I said a bit earlier, what I suggest to a lot of traders is that just stay on the 30 minute candle and above, but you know, you will see that there are examples across all time frames and all instruments, but I just say, you know, get yourself a little bit of experience. Okay. Just, you know, just try that. And I, and I appreciate that, you know, we have um, traders who join us for our sessions. Some of them are intraday traders. Some of them might be scalpers. Some of them may be swing traders. Some of them may be position traders. This setup, you will see it across all time frames and all instruments. It um, it doesn't happen as often as we would like, but then you know, um, good good setups really do. But once you've actually been able to sort of recognise and understand what has been going on, okay, why has this been created? Well, then it gives you that opportunity to to work out and understand uh, and actually employ it as one of your let's say trend continuation tactics. One of the things I, you know, I've noticed from my own trading is that, not unsurprisingly, uh, I prefer smaller candles, right? Because if I've got smaller candles, that gives me the opportunity to achieve my reward to risk. Okay, it makes it easier for me to achieve my reward to risk. If the confirmation candle is too big, then I generally suggest that you give it a miss. And um, what do I mean by too big? Well, part of that is an element of visually just looking apart on the uh, on the chart, but also just having a look at the candle. And you can, if you if you want to go into more data, you can basically reference it against the average true range for that particular time frame. If the candle is already, you know, if the candle is a really big candle already, well then just remember that means that. That, that trend has to move further in your direction to be able to hit that you know one and a half reward to risk target or if you are nearby to a level of support resistance what it means is that you know that the the, the risk to reward ratio on that trade might not necessarily make it a a, a good solid setup so it is important to look at the setup in the context of the overall market picture and you know and, and good traders are always doing their analysis anyway they're always you know building a picture they're raising their situational awareness about what's going on in that particular chart and being able to sort of just understand it at a uh, understand that setup in the uh, in the as i said in the context of the uh, the bigger overall picture so a bill saying is the smaller the candle, the smaller the risk. Um, I, I would never say smaller the risk, but what I would say is that uh, you know if you have a smaller candle for both the FTR candle and the confirmation candle, well then the the smaller the trade risk, okay, the the number of pips that uh, or points, okay, that is 
required to be able to hit that one and a half reward to risk ratio okay for your uh, for your trade that it becomes more important okay that's what becomes more uh, important it gives you the, the the tighter the trade risk the, you know the easier it would be for that market for that trend to actually achieve your uh, achieve your target that's that's what we're that's what we're talking about uh, that's what we're talking about there you know if the average range for you know if we're trading i don't know on the 4 hour chart on the euro dollar and the atr the average range of a candle you know on there is you know let's say for for you know for the sake of you know a sake of a hypothetically you know is, is normally i don't know let's say 30 pips and actually what we see is that our trade risk between where our entry is likely to be and where our stop loss you know if that's maybe 60 70 80 pips well then invariably what we're starting to see you know that that candle is very big because you know if it's if it's if it's let's say it's an 80 pip candle well then of course you know we're needing it to to, to move 120 pips to be able to to generate that one and a half reward to risk okay so you know ideally preferably we would like smaller candles um but you know what you want and what you get from the market can, can be two very different things so hence why you just want to, to sort of keep an eye on that and understand those the size of those candles in the context of the overall market picture so i hope that uh, hope that helps you build good question there so before we switch across to the uh, to the to the charts, all right. Um, so you know, just remember, Monday market matters is here for 2023. Um, I think it's been right in that saying that it's been an interesting year in uh, market so far, uh, and so I hope you're going to join us, you know, for the for the rest of the year uh, to enjoy this uh, interesting journey through markets. Um, so as you know, as we said right at the start, it's impossible for trend traders and reversal traders to capture the start of every new trend as much as we might like to think so but we do know that markets never move in straight lines even strong trends will have a pullback right there is always a pullback in a trend and this offers traders a chance to join that new trend and one simple version of this is what's known as the ftr the failed return setup and it is a two bar okay a two candle trend continuation momentum play and it is a simple mechanical setup that allows you to join that new trend uh, and can be used in both bullish and bearish markets across all instruments and all time frames but as i say to begin with probably just look at the 30 minutes and above just uh, effectively until you get your uh, cognitive recognition ability to to recognize the trend setups uh, and then you know then look at sort of amending it and adapting it to your own particular trading style so um yeah. we'll have a little look at a live uh, markets in a moment anyways you know the the u.s markets will have been open now for about what it's about 10 minutes isn't it so we will have a little look and see what's uh, see what's been particularly going on uh, there but before we do just a, a reminder that um you know after the the bank holiday uh, delays we are now back we've been here today we'll also be back next monday 22nd of may for monday market matters uh, and what we're going to talk about in that session in terms of the education element is we'll talk about understanding and using row row okay risk on risk off analysis okay so just as it says there just you know basically understand and trade using the risk on risk off sentiment right but very important and i think a very i think it's a very good way for new traders to be able to analyze markets you know if they can understand where the market is whether it's in a risk on or a risk off environment because that can actually help act as a good filter for your uh, for your trading decisions so um uh, as always if you've got any comments or questions you, you can put them to us or if you've got any thoughts on maybe there's one or two topics you'd like to see me cover in a future session by all means you're very welcome to to let us know we always appreciate any kind of feedback you can get hold of the english desk there on the email english desk at active trades Dot com. So um, if you'll bear with us for a moment, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the charts and have a little look at, you know, how the markets are opening, what's been going on uh, and just have a uh, um, yep, yeah, just uh, have a look as we sort of ease our way into the uh, to the US session. So just uh, bear with us one moment and we'll switch. Uh, we'll switch across to the charts. Bang. OK, super. So um, I'm hoping you can still all hear me. I'm hoping you can still all um, see me. OK, uh, and uh, you know, this is just going to start looking at the US indices, but I was just looking just before we came on here, just um, just reminding myself of, you know, this is gold. It's on the daily 
chart here, okay, and uh, actually what we saw here, all right, okay, just uh, back in March was um, price had basically done a reversal and you can see it started to move up. And then what happens? We get one bearish, okay, we get one bearish candle in that, in that you know, bullish momentum move. And then the next candle, okay, the next candle closes, all right, the next candle uh, is a bullish candle and it closes above the uh, and it closes above the high and this is where we start to get interested in understanding you know where we prefer smaller candles uh, over large candles you know um as you can see in fact if you trade gold you realize you know you can have um, enormously quiet days followed by enormously volatile days you know when when gold moves it does really decide to move and in that particular case you know Remember, once it's closed, you're looking to buy at market with your stop beneath the uh, the the lows. Okay, and the challenge you've got to here and understand is really is is basically just look at how you know the sort of the distance there. Okay, the 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 trade risk from um from our entry to our stop loss, uh, recognizing how big is that compared to this sort of overall ATR at the time. If it is if it is hugely bigger okay if it's you know if it's a you know real magnitude well then invariably what i'd normally be suggesting is that you know traders just give it a uh, traders just give it a miss okay traders give it you know we want preferably smaller uh setups smaller ftr and confirmation candles rather than really really rather large ones because you know as i said if once you've done that well then you're invariably looking for a a much bigger uh, a much bigger uh um range for that trend to move in order to hit your target now in, in this particular case with gold you know what we recognized was that you know we had 2000 here's a big number which um uh, i thought you know because there's a big number it would be like a magnet you know there's big round numbers that they can act like magnets and and what happens as you can see for yourself this price gets drawn towards it as i said you know there's big round numbers there'll be lots of orders there for lots of good and you know and bad reasons okay some people are just being lazy all right where and where they place their orders so they're just putting them around big round numbers other traders are putting orders there because because they they are looking to yeah to feed off other people's um trade orders. So you know those big round numbers, I always say it, big treble zero numbers. They you know they are of interest. They're always of kind of a useful to us. And in this particular case, we were looking at it as being the uh, you know remember we say you know it's either one and a half rewards risk or the next uh, major level of resistance. And that was that in that case. And we as a big round number, we look at it to basically to draw price towards it. Okay, to to basically be the uh, to be the man Magnet which uh, towards which price wants to move, but anyway, um, let's have a little look at uh, what we can see on the uh, the charts at the moment. Let's just um, just bear with me one second. Here we go. What we'll do is yeah, there we go. Um, so um, as always, just looking into the uh, open of the US uh, markets here. Okay, I have a little uh, profile here. I okay, on the MetaTrader platform, all right? Would be five or four, or you know, you can have it on the uh, Trading View Active Trader platform. Um, I have uh, you know a profile that's just set up with the US indices, and just want to be able to have a little look at um, you know what comes out. So I have uh, I have the Dow here. Okay, I have the Nasdaq. Uh, I have the SP 500, and I also have the uh, the the Russell. And you know, the Russell is um, I don't trade the Russell that much myself self personally but it is a tradable product there but what i do find is that you know I, I like to to see all of those american indices moving in unison which has not always been the uh, which has not always been the case okay recently with the uh, with the uh, things just as a, a little bit of a as a little bit of a, a analysis let me just bear with me one second let's just uh, uh, did, did, uh, let's just put on here i'm, I'm just going to yeah, just quickly so a big big top-down sort of uh, uh, analysis here let me just zoom these in so we can see them here you know what is of uh, what i'm looking at is these are all on the the weekly chart now let me just do this we've got time here I'll just bring up the old drawing tool here is is that you know last week okay on the weekly chart you know what we had was you know we were printing okay inside bars all right let me just here on the whoops bear with me one second apologies there we go. You know, inside bar on the uh, S and P five hundred. Let's just bring it up. And it wasn't so much on the. Uh, it wasn't so much, well. It wasn't an inside bar on the Nasdaq. Okay, some of those big uh, tech names. You know, had done well. But it, you know, it was a spinning top in terms of there was indecision there. And you know, you know, um, you will have heard me say talk about before in terms of inside bars. You know, you know markets are still like humans in that we surge, we rest, and we surge. Well, you know, this is a, you know these when you're getting inside bars, especially on weekly charts, it's almost like it's the rest before the next surge. Uh, and as I said earlier, you know, it's it's a quiet 
quiet-ish week, a quiet-ish week, much quieter than the last couple of weeks that we've had. So, you know, once again, it could be another rest week before we get something that becomes the catalyst for, for the next surge, for the next real movement in uh, in those markets. So, um, you know, I would be keeping uh, I'll be keeping an eye on those, okay? You know, as I said, I'm expecting them to, to, to be relatively quieter markets than than we have uh, than we have seen over the last um, couple of uh, weeks but if i look at the uh, if i look at the uh, the sort of thing of the dow let's go down okay the daily chart um, i see us you know we we are sat on that daily 50 period moving average we we kind of rolled our way over right we rolled our way over and invariably you know now we have the the 20 period moving average is acting as resistance there okay uh, and the 50 is acting as support so prices squeezing up which is you know what you expect when you're seeing uh, you know an inside bar being formed okay just a, a quiet inside bar being formed so you know that's what you'd be um, that's what you'd be particularly looking at um here so um there's a couple of actually whilst i'm here there's just a couple of a good example so um here price was moving up price puts in one bu 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 uh, bearish candle and it's an ftr candle uh, and then the next candle is a is a bullish confirmation candle but what we have here is you know that the candle size okay is is very large okay it's 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 very large and much larger than what the uh, what the average range would be at that time okay so that'd be a, a trade to, to move because you know as i said we we literally want a smaller okay much smaller thing um you, you actually have one here you know you've had a couple of the price is reversed okay we've had you know green 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 one candle which looks like uh, indecision before we get the next candle going again okay now um, i would say that's probably more of an advanced uh, trader setup because they'd recognize Nice that, that there was basically a reversal happening uh, here, but as I said, you know, ideally what we want to be doing is seeing smaller candles um, where possible when we uh, when we get them set up in a uh, in a, let's say in the kind of the clear new um, existing trend. So uh, anyway, just uh, just what's going on. I just thought I'd uh, um, draw that uh, uh, out there. Um, if we go down to what we're looking for is yeah, what we can see here is as we've entered the the, uh, the kind of the market here, we had. Uh, this morning okay this morning what we had was this is a 15 minute chart so as i said for beginning traders you want to really just focus on 30 minutes and above but um this morning just showing example from the the latest trades so is better um we had the asian session okay uh, and then we came into the london session and then you know you can see we've been clearly moving in an uptrend we get one okay we get one candle one bearish candle looks like a rejection candle and then we effectively get bang we get to the the second candle the confirmation candle right i think it closed about one point or so above you know it wasn't it was not much but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be much there's not you know it doesn't, there's nothing that says that it has to to basically close um uh to, to to basically you know close by a certain uh, a certain amount okay or anything so the 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 bearish candle the ftr candle it's high there was 33 you know 406 the next candle the confirmation candle it's closed was 33 407 so it's closed the point above it okay that is the ftr uh, and as you can see all right so just looking at basically just even using the fib tool quickly all right 261 is about one and a half rewards risk which is what it achieved right uh, and we can see that basically it uh, yeah you know it, it went a little bit further but um so yeah so that was just an ftr an intraday ftr from uh, this uh, from this morning but what we are interested in is we can see that that running up into the kind of the the open of the us markets that's what it's effectively it's rolled over there hasn't it that price has clearly um rolled its way um over there and i wonder if that's uh, the kind of the same for or other instruments let's have a little look at s p s p 500 so they see the s p 500 the 15 minute chart there yes it had the same maneuver but it didn't actually create it as a uh, didn't create it as a as an ftr it was two and that's the important thing is you, you know you don't make it with a couple of candles it is just one candle one bearish candle followed by a bullish candle okay here's two so it doesn't matter but um but what we can actually see is once again it's the very that's what we're that's what we're seeing there okay entering the us market let's have a look at what the uh um uh, russell is a little bit different from us t today and just looking at that on the thing there we go 
you know, I want to be looking at here is just because that they certainly they you know there's a there's a bearish slant to there at the moment. Okay, but the Russell is doing its own thing, and that's as I said, um, I normally like to see them all moving in unison, but that has not necessarily been the case recently. The, the, the Russell has done that. And what I normally look at, and what I normally suggest to traders is that you know the market opens at, you know, what we'll see here is you know I'm here in the UK, so it's be two thirty UK time or nine thirty US time Eastern Standard Time. Um, you know, normally my personal preference is to to wait. Okay, for at least fifty. 15 to 20 minutes, let the uh, the market sort of make its uh, moves, have some of that kind of um, aggressive volatility at the start of the session, let that kind of work its way out, and then look at seeing, you know, is, is there a very clear direction or a very clear reversal that is um, that's occurring in place, okay? And at the moment, at the moment, you know, there's definitely been, as you can see, there's definitely been a bearish slant there, a bearish uh, hint to the uh, to the opening of those US markets, but we'll see, you know, after the sort of, uh, in about nine minutes time, okay, start from, uh, start looking at right, Will, will will that actually look to will that look to continue will that basically you know have the uh, have the maneuver to to the maneuver move to to actually move i'm just looking there on the uh, just doing this as we get that okay so um i use boxes here to just effectively just give me the the idea of when the, the session's starting just to make it clear and easier for my eyes to 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 pick up and understand but you know my view would be you know we're just still looking at that on the uh, on the bearish side there okay so um, would be interested to see with uh, you know how does that how is that going to play out? Just look at that. Just let me see. I need to update my uh, fixed chart on here. Let me just bear with me one moment on this on this profile. Da, da, da. Yeah. Okay. So uh, bang. Okay. So you know. No surprise there. What we can see is, you know, the VIX is, I'm just looking at the VIX on the 15 minute chart and the same as that is just no surprises that VIX is, VIX has been rising. Okay. Not, not massively. Okay. Only from around the lows of about 2015 up to 2045. So not massive, but it's up above 20. And, you know, very often we'll see if the intraday is, you know, if the VIX is rising, well, there's no surprise to, to see that the, uh, the indices are falling in the same way as this morning. Uh, this morning, you know, we had uh, the VIX, the VIX falling. Uh, no surprise to see that we had the American indices uh, rising. So, you know, uh, as we go, we'll, as we'll go deeper into sort of intraday on those uh, trading those sessions in in future. Um, you know, the, there's all these kind of additional tools and instruments that we have here on the Active Trades platforms that can help you with your decision making. But you know, at the moment, as I said, I'd be uh, just you know, I would be uh, I'd have had a bearish slant, but we will see how that uh, plays out in a uh, in a few moments time. Okay, whether that uh, whether that basically is just just looking at particular uh, uh, levels of interest there, if there are any there that basically that um, that we're interested in. Yeah, I'm looking down here towards that sort of end of the Asian session. So, um, yeah, but, you know, as I said, it's interesting for me that, that the Russell is doing its own thing, okay, as opposed to the others. That's 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 increasingly been a common occurrence over the last uh, last few particular weeks. As I said, I'm, I much prefer it when they are moving, but you can see for yourself that. You know, for the most part, the Dow, the Nasdaq, and the S&P are are all quite happily moving, uh, you know, in a in the same direction. They're correlated. If and it happens on some days that you know each of the charts is moving in a different way, a different direction. And um, that's normally when I, you know if you're either looking for divergence or you're just basically seeing there's a breakdown of the of the correlations for whatever reason. It might be a term, it might be a, a temporary thing, it might be a, the start of a shift of a new um, a new trend or a new a new. Uh, environment that we're entering, but um, today, you know, that's that's what we're uh, yeah, that's what we're looking down. Okay, and that's that's definitely showing that kind of a bearish bias there towards the for us this morning and stuff, or what will be morning for the uh, for the US traders. Um, just before we go, let's have a uh, let's have a little look at um, you know what where else we've got uh, here because there's been a few there's been a few interesting um, there's been a few interesting setups. We had a we did have a little look at uh, we did have a little look at gold. Um, silver's been rather interesting recently. Uh, you know, is for those of you who trade gold, you know, gold has managed to hold up above 2000. We've talked about those kind of uh, treble zeros. Um, silver here in the weekly chart. Silver really struggled to hold up above twenty five dollars there, and you can see there's a, like a double top that uh, that occurred with it. Um, that occurred with it there. Um, you know, there's a, a good examples here. Okay, let me just. This is the daily chart here. So actually, kind of a nice, kind of a nice example here is that's a very nice. Okay, 
that's a very nice FTR setup. Price has been in a bullish uptrend, okay? Price has one bearish candle followed by, you know, next is a, a bullish candle, which closes above the high of the, uh, the bearish candle. Let's clear this down. It's also, you know, there are a couple of nice rejection candles, aren't they? That is, you know, that's a nice trend. Whereas if we look at here, price carries on, then it puts in, you know, this, FTR candle followed by the next candle is a real confirmation candle. You see, you know, it, it, you know, it is an FTR setup, but you know, if you just look, you'd be entering here with your stop loss beneath the low there. You know, that is a it's a very big range, isn't it? The 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 range of that candle is is considerably big. It's probably two three times bigger than the normal range of the uh, of the candles. And so, you know, it would have to make a, you know, a much, much bigger move to be able to hit. Furthermore, we're already actually at the the kind of, you know, the big round number there. So uh, this is, uh, as I said, this this is a very good example of, you know, this is an excellent, okay, that's a lovely fail to return setup, okay, that's a nice one, you know, and, and you know, you can make a case for, for this one here as well, but um, this one here is just, it's just far too big, okay, that is far too big, the, the trade risk, okay, in terms of the range is just far, far too big, okay, much, much too big, which means, you know, it has to go it travel even further for it to make a, a decent, solid reward to risk for us, and that's not, that's not what particularly we want to do, but anyway, so, you know, as I said, you know, there, was a, there will always be, uh, you know, an FTR there, okay? There's actually, you know, here on the daily charts there, okay? Price is moving down. It makes one bullish um, candle, doesn't it? And then the next candle is a, it's a bearish candle that engulfs it. That gives you your opportunity, okay? Close beneath it before you can go on there and stuff. So, yes. Uh, Carsten asks the question, so you consider the shadow and not only the body. Absolutely. Uh, you'll find that I... Uh, I uh, believe in uh, utilizing the wicks, okay? All of that is useful information. It is the open, the high, the low, and the close of that trading session. Those are four bits of very, very useful data to us as a trader, which we can utilize. So yeah, it's not just about the bodies. It is about the the entire range of the candle cost. It's a very good question that um, I uh, could have, should have made that clearer. So thank you. Um, thank you for your, uh, thank you for your help there. But um, yeah, just as I was saying, the, uh, we can see the, um, Silver had a great run before I put in a double top. And now what I'm doing here is looking at uh, invariably, you know, price is at the 50 period moving average. You know, what you might be looking at here is and saying, well, actually, Paul, you know, price is, let's just get prices, you know, price has been moving down nicely now. Okay. You know, with looks like this session, if this session is a bullish candle, I'd be keeping an eye on it because I'd want to see, well, well, if tomorrow is bear, if tomorrow's candle is bearish and closes beneath that low, well, then that would be a bearish FTR setup. So, you know, we'll just keep an eye on that on the, uh, on the daily chart for, uh, for silver there. Okay. Just to see how that is particularly uh, played out there. Okay. So, you know, as I said, there is always, you know, there is you know, there is always pullbacks in moves okay you know even the even the strongest move and you know in this this here was you know you know this was a strong move this was a very strong move okay but even with that you know there was pullbacks okay there are always pullbacks and the FTR is a way and a means okay possibly to give yourself the opportunity to join that trend okay and to take just a piece of it okay you know you're not looking to capture the whole range of it okay you're not trying to capture the exact start and the exact end because that's very hard for anybody to do but if you can just take consistently a small piece of it out of the middle then that that is actually all you have to do all right that's actually all you have to really uh, really do in terms of being a uh, trend following trader all right there you go ladies and gentlemen unfortunately as they say uh time flies when you're having fun and uh we've uh, kind of run out of a, a little bit of a little bit of our time there so i apologize that but um i hope you found that session useful i hope that's the ftr setup there it just gives you a little something just to as i said just a simple mechanical setup that you can take away and just have a little look at okay maybe it's something that you know you already have in your trading style and it might be something you can add to uh, you know might even be a way to to build a position you know for the uh for the smarter traders amongst us and you know, maybe experienced ones you might want to have a little look at, uh, at that as an idea but anyway for for the rest of us um i uh, i hope you found that useful that's given you a little bit of help and insight um it just as always you know it just remains for me to say that uh, i hope you have a fabulous trading week um, i wish you the very best of success in your trading and uh, endeavors and uh, i look forward to you joining us next monday two o'clock london time where we'll talk about trading in a uh, in a row row environment understanding row row sentiment have a great trading week and i'll speak to you soon thanks very much everybody cheers mm -hmm.